Welcome to DIY Volts. I'm Seth. Today I'm going to double the battery storage I have on my off-grid solar system. This is the Big Battery Ethos. I currently have 10 kilowatt hours of storage and I'm going to double that up to 20 using the parallel kit. Let's go ahead and get started installing the second set of batteries. This is one of the Big Battery Ethos battery modules. It's a five kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate battery. One of the nice things about this system is that you can purchase the number of batteries you need for your system. And if you only need five, 10, 15 kilowatt hours, then it's easy to purchase just the modules you need. So let's take a quick look at this real quick. If I move over here, you'll be able to see a couple of things. There are terminals that are orange or black, and this is going to allow the batteries to connect to themselves or to the control module. There's also a breaker. So if I unscrew this, I can pop the breaker loose and turn this on or off. So most of the time that just stays off. There's also a handle up here, which is very helpful. On the top, you find these little rubber uh, gaskets or rubber pieces and those help the next battery in line to stay on top without moving around. If I move over to this other side over here you can see up here there is a screw terminal that will open up and allow the Ethernet uh, communication cord to go into. There's also one on the bottom and that's for the next battery in line. There's a power button, a state of charge LED indicator, and in this little drawer right here, you'll find the ID bits to tell the uh, control board what number of battery this is in the paralleled array. So uh, that's just the basics of the battery. So let's go ahead and get this installed with the rest of my current system that you see back here. The first step is to place the base on the ground. Now you'll see there's also a little rubber gaskets here and there's a bit more gap in the back so be sure to put that toward the wall. So I'm going to go ahead and get that here and now it's time to put the first battery module on top of that. Now each module weighs 120 pounds so be very careful when you pick these up not to hurt yourself. Here we go. That's right where I want that. Now that I have the first module in place, it's time for the second. This one, of course, is a little bit more difficult because I have to go up a little further when I pick this up. All right, there we go. Looking good. Just enough clearance up here to prevent this box from hitting. And these batteries are heavy and you want to make sure you have them locked down to the wall so they can't fall over. So right here there are two different holes between the batteries and that's where this plate's going to go and it will then mount up against the wall. So I just want to push this forward a bit and then I want to attach this using a couple of screws and then some anchor bolts to get them into the wall. Luckily, this bracket gives you plenty of space, so in my case, I've got a piece of conduit behind the battery, and uh, the bracket uh, gives plenty of room to allow that one inch conduit to be back there. Now, I'm just going to use a pin to mark where I need to pre drill. I'm going to do that on all of these before I move the battery and drill. I've got all the holes marked where I want to pre drill, so I'm going to scoot the battery away for just a moment. So I can get my drill through here and get these pre-drilled. Now that I have the holes pre-drilled, I'm going to use some of the included anchor bolts to get this attached to the wall. I now have these two battery modules secured to the wall and they are nice and strong. Now, the next thing to do is to change the battery ID bit. So if you see this little drawer right here, there are some dip switches inside that need to be set. If I show you over here, I have got battery module number one, number two. 
So I want to set this one to be number three and lastly number four. This will be battery number four. It's the best one I can show on camera here. So I'm just going to unscrew these two right here. And that will allow me to pull this panel off here. All right, if you can see here, there are some dip switches. Let me zoom in a little bit more for you here. All right, four different dip switches. Now, if I bring up my uh, user manual, I can see that for battery position number four, I need to have this second switch right here popped up and the rest of them down. Now this is battery module number four. It's just the easiest for me to show here on camera. I'll move down to the next one and make it number three here in just a moment. Essentially, what you're doing is just giving each one of these batteries its own ID and that way the inverter and the BMS in the batteries uh, know what's going on. Each battery module communicates to itself by way of an Ethernet cable for the information. So I'm going to pull off the cap from the top battery and open the cap from the lower battery. And then I'm going to stick this data cable in here and then get these connected. On the very bottom of the battery stack, I'm going to loosen up this communications port and I've got another ethernet cable and this is going to attach from this battery to the previous battery stack that I already have installed. That communications cable goes all the way behind the battery and connects to the bottom of the previous stack right up in here. Now it's time to connect the power cables together. I've got an orange and an orange here that will need to be connected with this orange cable. So I'm going to sit this through the handle and get that attached and same down here. Luckily they make the cables the exact size you need for ease of use here. All right. And likewise, I have got this uh, other one over here to go to the negative side. Now it's time to connect the two different batteries together. So previously I had just one stack and so my cables went from the very bottom up to the very top where the control module is. However, this time I want to, well, first of all, both sets of batteries are totally off. So don't worry about that. I'm going to disconnect this right here, the long cable. I'm going to press this down under the handles. There's a bit of extra slack in there. Let's make this easy by just totally removing it here. All right, what I need to do is connect the positive and negatives on the very bottom of the original battery. And now this cable is going to go behind the battery. I can reach over here and get that. And this is going to connect down here. A little bit more slack there. All right. This is going to go down here to the bottom of the new stack. There we go. And likewise, the positive terminal is going to do the same. And that positive is going to go over here and connect to the bottom of the new stack, just like that. And now included with the parallel kit is another one of these long cables. So I'm going to take this negative and positive behind the battery and connect it up here to the control box. And then that's going to go over to the top of the other battery. Black one here is going to go here. Reach over here and get this one, and that is going to connect right over here. And that's it. All of the wiring and cabling is done to get these batteries parallel. Let's go ahead and turn them all on so we can see the output on this system. So I'm going to step right down here. I'm going to press the power button, the power button. And then do the same over here. Get that power 
and that one on. Looks like the big battery logo has popped up here. 400 amp hours, very good. So you can see up there in the corner, it's got 400, and that means that all of the batteries are now properly uh, installed and working together. I just turned back on the power for my EG418K, and it looks like everything is performing as it should. The battery is at 95%, and that is actually also what was shown here on the display. Let's wait for the big battery logo to go away. 95% right there. Very good. Everything seems to be working well. Now the last thing I can do to make this install look a little bit prettier is to put all of the plastic covers back on. For instance, here's one right here. And I will just get that, uh, let's see here, right in here. And it needs a single screw to get that complete. But uh, everything seems to be working well. I'm glad to have doubled up my power so I can now use my uh, 400 amp hours of battery storage or 20 kilowatt hours. Using the parallel kit, I was able to expand my storage from 10 kilowatt hours to 20 kilowatt hours for my off grid system. This is the Big Battery Ethos lithium iron phosphate battery, and it is designed to work well with the EG4 inverter that I have. If you want to check out either the EG4-18K or the Big Battery Ethos, I will have links to the Signature Solar page down below. So far, I've been using these in combination and they have worked flawlessly. And it is so nice to be able to expand my system to 20K. Now, the Ethos battery can go up to 30 kilowatt hours of storage with one inverter. Uh, I don't have the space in here for that much battery, but if you have to expand your system, you can definitely do that. Be sure to check those links down below. I'm Seth with DIY Volts, and I will see you in the next video.